Hi, and welcome to a presentation on the weightlifting snatch presented by Kate, Connor, and Ben. Here we have Connor performing a full snatch. Yep. To help with the design of our training program, we are now going to analyze the skill. Using the one dimensional classification, we found that the skill was primarily a gross motor skill due to the large muscle mass required to successfully manipulate the bar and execute the skill. Further, since there is a distinct beginning and end point to the movement, we concluded that the specificity of action was discrete. Finally, we found the stability of the environment to be closed as there is no intertrial variability in the environment. Using Gentile's two-dimensional taxonomy, we classified the environmental context as stationary and the action function to be no-body transport. Further, we found the environment to have no intertrial variability, yet there was object manipulation. Using this model, we classified our skill as 1B also known as number two in other interpretations of this table. To begin the snatch, we have the lift-off phase. The first key aspect of the snatch is the controlled pull of the bar from the ground to just above the knees. This is called the first pull. The next phase is a transitional. This involves explosively moving the bar from the knees to the hips while keeping the bar close to the body. The second pull is the next phase and can be seen as one of the most difficult phases of the skill to coordinate and execute correctly. The primary focus should be on performing a triple extension of the knees, hips and ankles simultaneously while keeping the bar as close to the body as possible. Next we have the turnover phase where the athlete uses their momentum to move the bar above their head and dive underneath. Next we have the catch phase. This is where the athlete stabilises the bar overhead, maintaining the extended elbows. The athlete must catch the bar with hip flexion greater than 90 degrees. If the athlete doesn't reach this criteria, the skill is seen to be a power snatch. Lastly is the overhead squat where the athlete performs simultaneous knee and hip extensions, standing up with the bar above the head. The movement is complete when full control of the bar is shown. We have designed a program around an example 20 year old male athlete. In regards to expected transfer, we expect to see some positive transfer from the athlete's basic resistance training background and the muscle mass built from that. We expect no transfer from his previous team sports background. As we understand that we have a limited capacity for attention, we will be avoiding a dual task paradigm and performing drills specific to the skill. Further, through the use of drills and repetition, we hope to progress the athlete from sensory to short term and finally long term memory by the end of the program, so that we see as small a decrement as possible in the retention test. Prior to the commencement of the skills training program, the athlete will make 10 attempts to perform a snatch after a basic demonstration with no other instruction. We will analyze quantitatively by seeing how many lifts were successful or unsuccessful. Qualitatively, we will analyze body position and control of the bar. This test will also be performed immediately after the conclusion of the program to measure improvement and performance. According to Fitz and Poz's three stages of learning, we expect our learner to be in the cognitive stage approximately for the first two weeks of the program before transitioning to the associative stage. We do not expect the learner to progress the autonomous phase, which is characterized by decreased learning speed, less errors, and an increase in learning difficulty. In the initial phases of our training program, our athlete will use a broomstick in replacement of a bar to focus more on skill acquisition than lifting and resistance. Weight plates may also be used under the athlete's ankles to help increase range of motion in the initial phases of training. The athlete will use a hexagonal barbell to perform deadlifts as research by Kamara et al. 2016 showed it was better at increasing force, power and velocity when compared to other barbells. Foam boxes of different heights will also be used for plyometrics training. The last key practice tools of our program are the barbell and weight plates. Initially, we will begin the program using light training plates and then we will slowly build resistance as their skill acquisition progresses. The use of mental practice tools such as meditation and imagery will also be used throughout our training program. Research has shown that mental practice can help improve reaction time, self-efficacy and speed of learning. Yeah, now I don't mean to brag, but I'm a big city kid, gone with the wind, shoot from the hip, and all across the world, no difference. Every city in the world at home within. Man, it could be nothing like the high life. Shit, I'm still a sucker for a skyline. The open road's fine to write a couple of lines, but the cities tell the story of a lifetime. Cut, 
Lights, camera, action. It's all that. Everything you imagine is right there. You could reach out and grab it. Dreams turn reality. Big smoke magic. Maybe I'm biased. And maybe the setup. Maybe it's just that I don't know no better. The city don't sleep. Speakers at 11. If they got a question, this is what I tell them. Them, them, them. City streets are endless. Them bright lights catch the eye. We push it to the limit. We build it to the sky. And anything can happen. So you to roll the dice, hold tight, and get ready to ride. I The ideal role of providing augmented feedback is upon the completion of the movement or terminal feedback. The other type, concurrent feedback, would not be ideal because if the feedback was given in real time, the participant would not be able to make the appropriate adjustments while in motion. Knowledge of performance is more appropriate as it strongly focuses on the technique or lead up work towards the outcome rather than the outcome alone. It provides both an informational and motivational role, but mainly motivational as it provides an incentive while critiquing their progression. With the snatch being a highly complex skill with loan organisation, the appropriate approach would be a parts practice. This would make the learning the skill more convenient and easy to understand after breaking each individual component before completing the movement pattern as a whole. Through the distributed practice, the more frequent this skill is learned, the easier the participant will be able to retain what was previously learned and prevent them from being worn out. Segmentation not only facilitates the individual's attention demands of each separate component, but also the ability to coordinate the following movements one after another. Skill involving no intertrial variability of regulatory conditions, it is suggested that the regulatory conditions remain the same and non-regulatory conditions changes. Therefore, it has a low contextual interference resulting block practice being the appropriate approach and learning the technique together with the individual components that make up the snatch. After a week of no training, the initial test will be conducted again to measure retention and learning. To measure transfer, we can analyse the performance of the movement in a separate environment under competition stress or with weight on the bar. We can test the transfer to a different weightlifting movement, such as the clean, in order to see if the underlying principles will effectively transition. <laughs> 